Alexis from Persia Lou, and today I'm here with my good girl, my good girl, she's a good, good girl, that Colleen, my good friend Colleen from Lone and Thistle, and we are back with another Silhouette versus Cricket Challenge. For this week's Silhouette versus Cricut Challenge, we are taking on how to cut any image with your Silhouette or Cricut, and how to import your own files into the design software. We're talking different file types, how to get lettering or pictures that you have created on paper into your software to cut them out, and a couple different techniques to do that. We'll walk you through the process in both the Cricut Design Space software and the Silhouette software. This goes for things you've drawn yourself or for files that you have downloaded from other blogs or websites. Be sure to watch both of our videos whether you are a Cricut or Silhouette user and we'll be giving you lots of tips and ideas on how to use your own images and designs for beautiful cut files and projects. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so I have my Silhouette Studio software open and I wanna start off by showing you what types of files you can open with the basic edition of the Silhouette Studio software, the version of the software that comes for free with your machine. So the types of files that you can open with the basic edition of the software are of course the studio files, which are the types of Silhouette files that you can buy from like Silhouette store, but you can also use with the basic edition of the software, PNG, JPEG, and BMP files, which are all image files they're basically little pictures or clip art. Um, they're rasterized images, they're made up of pixels, and you can use any of those types of files to create your own cuts and your own designs with the software. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really simple. So first, you just need to open up the file that you want to cut or that you want to use. So to do that, you're gonna go to File, Open, and select your file or you can also just click right here on this little file folder icon and that will bring up your window here too also to select which images you want so let's start let's open up this floral motif which is a JPEG this is a big image so that's nice it's going to not be too pixelated if I need to scale it up I'm going to scale it down a little bit just so we can see it better this um, image is one that I have for free on my website, and I'll include a link to that if you would like to get that to cut. And then let me also open up this pinata, which is a PNG file, and so you can see this one is a lot smaller. And also you notice that both of these designs I'm working with are fairly simple in their design. They don't have a ton of detail, and the colors are simple. Those will be the easiest to work with, especially if you want to cut that design out of paper or vinyl. If you're doing a print and cut, um, then a more complicated, intricate design will work just fine with that. But if you wanted to cut this flower out of vinyl, then you will want a more simple design like this one. Okay, so we have our image. You'll notice when we go here to the send file, and I click to select the design, and I go over here and I select cut, it's cutting along the edge of the image not along my flower here. So we, this file, because it's an image file, it's a, it's a JPEG PNG, it is not ready to cut. So we have to do some work in the software to get this image ready to cut. But it's not hard to do, so let me show you how we do that. So first, I'm, I need to open up the trace panel, which it kind of looks like a little butterfly here. And now I need to tell the software what area I want to trace in. So I'm going to click on this select trace area and just drag a rectangle around my design. All right, so right now my threshold is set to 45 and nothing is really happening here. So I'm going to open my thread or er, up my threshold. And you can see as I move the threshold up, more parts of my design fill in with yellow. And I think that looks good. It's all pretty much filled in. And now all I need to do is just click trace and that will create the cut lines around my design. If instead of selecting trace, I click trace outer edge, it will not cut, see like it didn't cut this hole in the center. So that trace outer edge is especially good um, for if you, sometimes if you just want the outside of a shape or if you're working with print and cut, that works really well too. Okay, so that is how you can cut an image file like a JPEG or PNG in the Silhouette Studio software. 
Now I want to talk a little bit about other types of files that you can open if you have the designer edition or higher of Silhouette Studio software. I highly recommend getting the designer edition of the software if you're going to be working with your Silhouette a lot. It offers you some great extra features, but one of the most important ones is that it allows you to open SVG or vector files. Let's open one of those so I can tell you what I'm talking about, or show you what I'm talking about. Let's open the SVG version of that pinata. Okay, so here I have the SVG version of the pinata file I already opened here. So this is the PNG and this is the SVG. At first glance, they look pretty much identical, but let me show you what's different and why the SVG is so much easier to work with. All right, if I click on this file and go to my send tab and then click cut, the cut lines are already there for all of the different colors and layers. I don't have to trace anything. And the other thing that's great about SVG images is that they are made up of vectors instead of pixels, which means that they are scalable and that they will not lose their shapes and they won't become pixelated at different sizes. The other thing that's cool about SVG files like this is that they can include a lot of different shapes in one file. So before with this, with, or with the pinata here, this is all one layer. But if I go here and I ungroup my object, I can pull out the different colors and shapes, which makes it can make it easier to cut all of the different layers that I would need to cut to use this. If I was going to like make a multicolored vinyl decal, that would just make it easier to work with. There's one other type of file that you can open with the designer edition of the software, and that is a PDF. So let's open up one of those to look at that. I have a PDF of my pinata right here. We'll open that up. And then it's going to give me an option to either import as a vector or import as an image. Import, I recommend import as vector. What that means is it's going to give me all the cut lines and things just as if I was importing an SVG. If I import as image, it's going to be like it was when I imported a JPEG or PNG where I'm going to have to trace. Let's do import as vector, then click import. All right, and here we go. We can scale it. And just like with the SVG, if we go over here to cut, it has all of the different layers. What you have built into the file will depend a little bit in how, on how the file was created and what program it was created, but that is another option to try the import as PDF. Okay, now let's talk about how easy it is to turn your own hand-drawn or hand-lettered designs into cut files. All you need to do is scan in or even take a picture, which is the easiest way to do it, of your design. And this works great with kids' notes and drawings too. Then all you have to do is open that image in the Silhouette Studio software. And it's gonna be big, but I'm just gonna scale it down. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm just going to select the trace area, adjust my threshold, and I'm not gonna worry about this corner right here. I'm gonna show you what to do with that after, but when the lettering looks good, I'm gonna click trace, and then I can delete this. And now to get rid of this extra part down here, I'm going to do object release compound path and then I'm just going to drag my mouse to select all those little pieces and then I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to do the same thing. I had a little speckle here. I'll delete that and then I will drag to select all the pieces of my lettering object group and now I have my own hand lettered design ready to cut. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that you understand how to use your own images and designs, how to open different types of files and use them in the Silhouette Studio software. Until next time, happy making.